What's up everyone, Kinetic here, and welcome back to Fantasy Star Online 2. You might notice something different here. It's in English. That's right. There is a wonderful team. Team? Maybe only one guy. There's a couple of people, I imagine, that are working on an English patch. An unofficial English patch for Fantasy Star Online 2, and it's pretty damn impressive. So first thing I want to say is shout out to those guys uh, whose names I cannot remember. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you for the... English patch for Fantasy Star Online 2. And without further ado, I would like to get into showing you guys some really interesting things that I've been discovering. I've understood a lot more since I've done the opening tutorial for this game. I've tried out lots of different things, including new characters. This is one of my alts, Motoko, who is currently a ranger in Fantasy Star Online 2. Let's give her a try. Now what I would like to do for this video is I would like to try and explain a little bit about sort of what you might want to do as soon as you finish that tutorial. Um, there are many things to discover, many things to, to begin to understand, and probably one of the things that you're wondering most is what next? What do I do? Where do I quest? How do I get experience and stuff like that? Well, that is what we're going to do for this video over here and actually the same pretty much over there at that other counter. There is this person over here, the quest counter attendant. Okay, and so from here you're able to take on new quests and stuff like that, um, which will help you gain experience. And you can do these solo or in parties. Let's get started. Looks like I unlocked a new quest. Sweet. So we will choose from our quest list, Arcs Quests. And here I've un unlocked up to a level 7 quest. Currently I'm level 3. And that means I basically need to continue to do the quests that are, are available to me at my appropriate level. Now, unfortunately, Fantasy Star Online 2 doesn't really have a large quantity of available quests. You kind of repeat the same quests and kind of do the same thing over and over again. It's a bit grindy, but I've noticed the little differences about it, and I'll kind of tell you about that here soon. Let's do let's do a really quick quest because I don't want this video to be too lengthy and I just and I was blah, 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 blah. I'm getting tongue tied. There's so many things that I want to say to you guys. Um but I'm gonna try and keep it simple. Let's just do subdue Zaudan. We're gonna choose normal because I'm definitely not level 21. Quick start, sure. There we go, and now we're ready for our quest. So now that I have a quest loaded up and ready for me, I'm able to go ahead and head out to the camp ship. And I can tell you guys, in the next video, I will go on to explain more about this ship, the, I guess you could call it the mothership, um, <laughs> and show you guys around to the shops and stuff like that. But let's go on to a quest. So I can talk about combat, talk about weapons, talk about getting stuff and and then the things that you use with those items back in town unfortunately kanako is not here you might have noticed um <laughs> she's been very busy again as uh, as it seems lately and yeah that's just kind of how it is i will try to get her in as often as possible she really does like this game and she wants to play with me and we will do some uh, co-op together very very soon All right, so here we are. Now, at first sight, I'm sure you're, you're like, wow, this is the exact same area. Yes and no, not really. I mean, <laughs> with these quests, what is, what's kind of interesting, what it seems like is that every time you return to this area, even if it's the exact same quest, it is, is sort of like randomly generated these different paths that you might take. So it might have sort of like the same terrain, but it, it will be randomized in some way or another. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna get into some combat here a little bit sooner than I expected. So I'm gonna talk about the controls a little bit more in detail. Now you might remember some of the, some of the things from the, uh, the tutorial about the timing and stuff like that. I want to sort of reiterate that and, and emphasize the importance of timing. Now, since I'm a ranger, it's a good idea to lock onto my target, definitely. And now I can just left-click, and I can start shooting at my character. Or my enemy, I mean. 
and you notice that there's like an orange bubble that's popping up and then there's a spark after that. That is me using good timing. If I just spam my left click like this, you see nothing really is happening. I mean, I'm damaging the enemy, but there's no circle bubble, there's no sparks flying and stuff like that. And that's because I'm not really doing the timing correctly. If I wait just a, a, a fraction of a second in between clicking the left mouse button, you see that? And then it does more damage that way. Your attacks are more effective by giving yourself that timing in between clicks. So instead of just click, 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 click again, click again. When you see that, that orange circle come up, that's when you click again. And you will be much more effective in your attacks. Playing a ranger, I also discovered, is a little bit more challenging than playing as a hunter. I haven't played focus very much, but um, yeah, between hunter and ranger, ranger is a little bit more challenging because of, well, you can't block. I mean, at least not that I have discovered with the weapons I've been using. Blocking is not really an option, so that means you gotta kite a you kite you gotta kind of kite your enemies around and stuff like that and i really recommend no matter what class you are stay on the move keep keep moving around be conscious of your environment and stuff like that and keep your eyes on that mini map definitely all right so now i'm locked on my target but i'm going to do something different this time watch this here we go now we've got kind of like an older over the shoulder view and this is good if you're fighting multiple enemies and you don't want to lock lock on just to one target and lose control over your camera. This will keep you loose, but keep you sort of focused, kind of like an in-between, you know what I mean? Instead of being like this, this gives me a little bit better control, I think. Especially as a ranger. Talking about all that uh, timing and stuff like that. I'm talking and playing at the same time, I'm not even sure if I'm uh, effectively doing the attacks the way I explain them. I'm pretty sure I am though. Like it's almost become sort of second nature to me. I've been playing this for a fairly good amount. Of oh, hello. Been playing this for a fairly good amount of time. So I think even when I'm, I'm sort of babbling on doing commentary and uh, playing at the same time. Yeah, I think I got this down. Now something you might be thinking about is, uh, well, this is great saying the same attack again and again, but what else can you do, Kinetic? I'm glad you asked that, and I will show you in the next fight. It turns out that the combat is not really as overly simplified and, and boring as it seemed. There, there is definitely a pleasurable amount of depth. I will, that's what I'm going to call it, a pleasurable amount of depth to this game's combat. Um, and there are some interesting things that you can do as far as your weapons, what weapons you equip, and what photon arts that you equip with your weapons. Now, photon arts are basically like special abilities that you can sort of uh, equip with your weapon. So instead of just the normal fire, I can also do a piercing shot with my right click. Now, you might remember from the, the original video, I was doing the really special sword attacks and stuff like that, and that every time I do that also with a ranger, it does the same thing. Oh, By using special attacks, I'm using my PP gauge, which you might notice down there in the lower left is draining every time I use a special ability. But you can do more than just equip one special ability. You can actually equip multiple special abilities for your weapons, including... An awesome grenade shot like that, which is great for AoE damage against multiple targets that are kind of clustered together. And I, I achieve that by holding down shift, which you might remember is how I blocked as a hunter with my greatsword. So by combining these different controls with the different photon arts that are equipped to my weapon, I'm able to do multiple types of attacks with a single weapon, not to mention all the other weapons that I can equip with all of their own different photon arts. Now this thing right here is kind of interesting. It it sometimes seems relevant sort of to the progression of the story, and then sometimes it's just random where you are just talking to a character. Confused? Here, I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to walk up to it and press E. Yeah, 
君は気合い入ってて見ていて安心できそうだああそれいいことだよダーカーと戦うってことが惰性化してくるとどうしても油断やおごりが生まれるからねダーカーはあらゆるものに侵食しその影響を顕著に及ぼす凶暴性の増強がその最たるものさアークスは侵食を受けないと言われているけどそれも絶対的に保証されたものじゃないからほんと厄介な相手だよ無尽蔵に湧いてくるし勝手にどんどん増えていっちゃうしまあフォトンの力で倒せばなんとかなるってのが分かっているだけマシだけどね<laughs> so, yeah, you will run into all sorts of different characters by clicking on these、uh, sort of little story time cutscenes that you will find every time you go out questing. And it's interesting, it's sort of like,、um, yeah, it, it gives you a little bit more immersion into、uh, the different characters and story. Now, I mentioned before about the importance of keeping moving, and it's more than just for defensive. You can also use movement as sort of an offensive method as well. Now, these guys were all spread out, but what I'm going to do is I'm, ju I'm just going to put them all together if I can. And then, once I get them all collected together nice and tight. Ah! Come on! Boom! Look at that. I can attack multiple enemies with a single attack. So, by keeping on your toes like this, you're able to make it harder for the enemy to get the jump on you. And also, you can gather your enemies together like this by moving around them, which makes them easier targets. At least that's how I think about it. So stay on the move. That's my. That's one of my biggest recommendations in this game is keep moving for offense and for defensive purposes. Since that cutscene popped up, it brought something to my attention that、uh, you guys might be thinking about. Well, if,、uh, if I'm. Playing with the English now and stuff like that, do I understand or what happened during the,、um, the initial tutorial and stuff like that? What was that all about? What were the characters talking about and stuff? Well, not much to be honest. I mean, honestly, the,、um, the conversation pieces going on in that tutorial,、uh, first part of the story, it was really just like, oh, you're a new guy? Yeah, so am I. Oh, who's this guy? Oh, he's a senior guy. Oh, okay. And these, oh, they're the bad monsters and we're part of the group. To destroy them. And that was pretty much it, to be honest. I mean, even like the really crazy, like white, like summon unicorn thing that the other guy did, even that wasn't explained. It was really kept very, very basic. So you guys didn't miss out on much.、Um, but from this point on, I will be using the English patch to show you guys gameplay and story. So、uh, yeah, you'll be able to follow along much better as、uh, some more interesting things unfold. Ooh, I got a new gun. Well, since that popped up, why don't I show you guys about equipping weapons while you're out on a quest? Hit escape, and we'll bring up your menu. You go here, equip weapons. Alright, so now I've got three available sections that I can equip weapons into. Currently, I've only got two weapons selected. This is my main weapon. This is what I've been using this whole time. I'm going to click on this, and it's going to show me a list of all the available weapons that are in my inventory. Now, you might notice that there's a weapon here with a red exclamation mark. Now, I didn't really understand what this is at first, but what I believe that this means now is that this is a new item in my inventory. I think that that's what this is meant to show. So now, as soon as I've highlighted, that disappears. So, it knows that I've discovered and understand that, that this item is in my inventory. Now, kind of looking at this, I can see that all of these are guns for the most part. And what I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for the most 
powerful gun, of course, because that's what we want to use, right? Well, if you look here, you can see some numbers. There's like negative 43, negative 43. That means that that is weaker than the gun that I'm maybe switching another weapon for. So I'm going to look for bigger numbers, of course. I'm going to look for orange numbers if I can. But unfortunately, it looks like... Looks like for, for that gun, that gun is the most powerful. And everything else that I can attempt to equip here would be weaker than what that is. So I will keep using what I'm using. If, if it was actually better than simply clicking on one of these things here would replace it. And now that's the new weapon in hand. But, ah, here we go. Now you can see the, the orange numbers. So plus 43. Definitely better than what I'm using now, so I will re-equip that. And now here are your photon arts, the things that I was talking about. This is the piercing shell, which I use simply by right-clicking, and there's the grenade shell that I use by holding shift, and here's another ability that I can equip here. Let's put diffuse shell here, All right? And that's how you equip photon arts and weapons. You can do that anytime, it seems like in this game, during quests and when you're back at the mothership. Here we go. And that is my primary target, I think. I don't want to get hit by these guys, so I definitely want to use my dodge by double tapping on them. And that's it for him. See a new weapon drop. It looks pretty much the same as what I've already picked up. When it's one-on-one -on -one like this, it's very, very easy. And this is an opening quest after all. So uh, if it looks like it's too easy to you, trust me. Trust me. Not long from now, the quests are going to be more challenging. There's going to be a lot more enemies, and these quests will get longer. <laughs> I can promise you that. And I will try to show you that in the next quest video. And that's it. Completed emergency trial. Zaudan. You might have noticed there was one more around here, wasn't there? Yeah, you will... Um, you will complete quests, but um, I highly, highly, highly recommend, look over here, highly recommend that you complete looking around at the entire map before you jump back to the, uh, the transport ship and back to the mothership, because you might miss out on stuff like this, extra loot boxes. You don't want to leave these behind. Hell no, you want to make sure you pick those up. That other monster really did disappear, huh? I thought he was going to stick around for some more action. I guess not. So that marks the end of this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Fantasy Star Online 2, available here only in Japan. This is on the PC. It will be coming out very shortly for the PlayStation Vita, also here in Japan. Keep your eyes open for more action from here on my channel, Digital Pulse GTR. Kanako will join us, I promise you very soon in Fantasy Star Online 2. Until then, I will continue to try and do my best to show you guys the basics and show you some really good action from this game until it's hopefully someday soon in your hands and you can play it too. Until then, my name is Kinetic and I'll see you guys next time.